All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to this uh, week's Thief River Falls Strong webinar. And uh, actually, I'm just gonna hand it right off to Antonio to introduce our presenter this morning. All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us again. And, and those who may be new on the, on the uh, webinars, thank you for joining us. Uh, so I'm excited about our speaker today, uh, Rani. She's worked with our community in the past. She's also worked with Michelle on past projects, our making it home project. Um, she's been with the uh, community economics team for the extension office since 2012. She's also served as community development fellow with uh, Illinois <coughs> for uh, rural affairs, where she worked on agro-tourism research and served as a statewide field staff for rural partners, Illinois. Uh, with rural partners, she worked on housing and rural broadband access issues throughout the state. Prior to her fellowship in Illinois, Ronnie also served for three years with the Peace Corp in Bulgaria, um, where she helped implement a regional sustainable tourism strategy focused on engaging migrant populations within the regional development strategies concerning tourism, entrepreneurship, and environmental education. So I'm excited to have her today. Uh, she's going to be speaking on customer retention and understanding your, your value and your customers. Such an important topic during this time when uh, uh, some customers are um, interacting in different ways and their behaviors change. So uh, welcome, Randy. Thank you, Antonio. You're welcome. Thank you, Michelle, both for inviting me to speak during your webinar series. Um, like Antonio said, my name is Rani Bhattacharya, and I will be talking about customer retention, understanding the value of your customers. So before I get started, I really want to know, how, how do some of you know your customers are happy? And feel free to answer. Like, what are the feedback? What's the feedback that you get from your customers? How do you know that they're satisfied with their product? Uh, and this is, this is Michelle, Ronnie. Uh, so everybody's muted. So just, just kind of to remind people of controls. Uh, you can unmute yourself or mute yourself. So um, when you're not speaking, I think it's a good idea to mute yourself, but um, you'll need to unmute yourself uh, to speak or you can uh, in, uh, increase from the, or excuse me, uh, submit your, uh, your response via the chat. And I see we have someone here uh, saying uh, reviews online and mm -hmm. return customers are some of the ways uh, that this, this gal knows her customers are happy. Mm -hmm. Any other ways that people do it? Does anybody like actually do like satisfaction surveys of their customers? Well, I just wanted to get um, some of you to start thinking about how do you know if your customers are happy because this is what we're kind of angling at when you're talking about customer retention. Um, you're always trying to understand what their experience is in your business and with your service or good or service or product because once you understand that life cycle, then you can understand what touch points they have um, in, in with your business. So today um, I'll be talking about mapping your service cycle, also telling your story and um, customer service and then quality before speed and loyalty programs. So in mapping your service, um, there's a number of different points in the process where a customer will be in, be in contact either with your staff, with your product, or with your business. And it's a good, this is actually a really ideal time at this point um, to kind of map out what those touch points are for customers when they are working with your business. And here's an example um, of one map of one touch point. And what you wanna do is look at what the ideal experience is you wanna provide um, to that customer. And you wanna look at the actual experience that they're having with your business. And then you wanna look at what's, the, what's available at the front of the house or front facing to your customers. And then what's at the back of the house or what's, what needs to be happening behind the scenes to um, enable your customers to have that ideal experience. And then you also have to identify an experience owner. So in this case, <clears throat> um, we wanna have customer purchasing goods online. 
But the actual experience right now is that they have to call to ask what is in stock. So at the front of the house, you want to have pictures of goods in stock on your website. And at the back of the house, that means you have to have quality photos of your stock um, and an online store set up on your website. And so the person that's savvy enough, the, the person that's most knowledgeable about this work would be your website manager, Shelly Cook. And so um, another example would be, um, you know, a customer walks away with a wonderful experience at the front desk. And so you could map out like what's available at the front desk for them to have that experience. Is it a self checkout? Is it great customer service? Is it um, a reward system? So um, I would have encouraged all of you to take some time to kind of map out that cycle of service that you provide to your customers um, to, help th to help you better understand how are they interacting with your business and, you know, those moments of truth um, with your customers where they actually engage with and can learn more about your, pro about your um, good or service or your business because those are the points where you can add value and you can enrich the customer's experience with your, with your business and therefore encourage them to come back at a future date. And um, some other examples could be also, you know, what does your business look like from the outside? Is this something that is appealing and welcoming or is it something that is just like utilitarian and functional? Is it well, you know, are there things that you can do to make your storefront look more welcoming to, um, to potential customers and to returning customers? Are there like, special parking lots, parking spaces where return customers can come and park special up front, especially, especially up front, as, as opposed to other customers who are just coming in for uh, um, just to peruse your goods and services. So there's a number of different touch points in your business that um, people can engage with and it's your job as a business owner to understand and enhance those touch points whenever possible. And in enhancing your story, enhancing those touch points is usually um, done by telling a little bit more of your story when they engage with your staff and when they engage with you. Um, this adds authenticity to your good or service and it provides customers the opportunity to relate to your business values. And it also gives customers a chance to buy into those value into the value of your good or service, the monetary value of your good or service. Um, and this is important because if they don't understand the origin of your story or the origin of your, you know, why you're doing what you do with your business or service, they, they can't understand, you know, the, the, the monetary value that you've put on that good or service. And without, under, without having that opportunity to understand it, then you're just one of the many goods or services that are out there for them to buy. The more that you can personalize that experience of the customer when they come visit you, you know, tell them about like how you had your kids running around your feet when you first opened up the store or, you know, when, you know, the first time that you landed that big contract, um, you know, what were some of the, the pitfalls and the, and, the, and the successes that you had. I think is important because it gives it gives a sense of authenticity to your product that people they can empathize with they can relate to they can they can share they can they can um, attach their own story to your story and telling your story can come in a myriad of ways it can come with a storyboard on your website it can come through Facebook posts it can come through um, actually sitting down with a customer and talking about a good or service and how you decided to start selling that good or service in your store. Um, it can come through um, like um, an actual printing on the side of like the, I've seen like, a, I don't know if you've seen this on cereal boxes, but a lot of cereal boxes actually have like these stories on the side of their box, of the cereal box about where their ingredients come from. That's a way of where, where they're trying to tell their story. 
and have people empathize with that good or service or that good that they're that they're, they're producing. So you could actually do that, like you, um, you could do, do the story on the side of your packaging, for example. You could also, I mean, people say, you know, established since 1939 or established since 1978. That's another part of telling your story and giving authenticity to your good or service because when you give them more of the value behind your good or your, your good or service they they can understand why why it's priced the way it is they can understand why it's important to the community when they hear more about how it's related to the community they can understand why it's more important to you as an individual because this is your lifeblood this is your what you do every single day it's something that they it, it personalizes the experience of understand of purchasing your good or service in a way that um just buying your good or service off the shelf doesn't. Does anybody have any questions about telling your story? Uh, we did have just a couple comments that came in the chat box. Uh, you know, when you asked about how people knew what, what, uh, what their customer's perspective was, um, mm -hmm. we had uh, uh, Kermit said, uh, the vibes you get after the sale, um, and uh, then um, simply Andy's uh, word, of uh, word of mouth feedback in our small town is huge. And I think we do see that in small towns. Uh, word of mouth is very powerful. Things get around very quickly and they're, they're strong either for good or bad. Um, mm -hmm. Square feedback requests get good replies. So I think that's through the, the, the square system um, and Facebook and Google reviews. So those are just mm -hmm. a couple of uh, couple of things that came through in terms of uh, receiving customer feedback. Okay. <clears throat> well, the next part is um, customer service and um, providing excellent customer service adds consistency to your customer's experience. And it builds a strong foundation of service um, on the part of your staff. And the four areas that you really need to pay attention to when um, Building out your customer your customer service plan is attitude of your customer of your employees, the attention that they give to your customers, their appearance, not only of the um, the employees themselves, but also of your business, and then their willingness to take action to help customers get what they need. The more um, proactive they are in all four of these areas in maintaining a consistent attitude, a consistent um, level of attention, a consistent appearance, and a consistent um, desire for acting on um, uh, customers' needs, the more um, consistency the, the customer will feel when they come to visit your store. I mean, if they, they can expect X, Y, and Z kind of customer service from your business, then that means that they're going to come back and they can expect that again and again and they, they'll appreciate that because it's something that they can rely on and they're willing to pay for. And um, again, customer service also plays into that mapping out your service cycle. Um, if you, the more that you can focus your employees on attitude, attention, appearance and action during that cycle, um, the more solid your service will be for retaining customers. And um, it'll be stronger because they'll be able to um, value it. They'll, they'll be able to um, really dig, dig in deep into understanding your business in a way that just having somebody come into the store, purchase something and walk out would never have them engage, would never engage them in, in in a, an emotional or psychological way. Whereas like having this customer service, you're, you're, you're going beyond just the, the standard experience and you're adding value in a way that um, engages those psychological and social um, levels of relationship building that is necessary to really retain your customers. Are there any questions about customer service? Ronnie, this is Laura Stengrim. I was just going to mention mm -hmm. to our participants that 
I have gone through the University of Minnesota Tourism Center's customer service training. Um, mm -hmm. So some of this sounds kind of familiar and brings back <laughs> memories. Yes. Um, and I am sort of certified to deliver this training to our local businesses, um, which the last, in the last probably five years, I've delivered this training to um, over a dozen businesses. And so just if anybody's listening that is interested in, in more um, customer service training, I am more than willing to talk to you about that and potentially deliver that right in your business to your staff. Thank you, Laura. That was a great ad. Um, the next topic I want to talk about is quality before speed. And this is a very important value add to your customer's experience because it shows your customer that they're valued for more than just their money. And it gives your employees a chance to show their creativity to customers. <clears throat> and quality before speed means that you're, look, you're, you're really looking to satisfy all of the customer's needs from coming into your store or from interacting with your business, rather than just that transactional need of purchasing your good or service um, and then leaving the store. Um, the quality before speed also means that you are allowing time for the, that attitude, attention, action and appearance to really sink in with your customer. Um, when you give more time to your employees to really address the needs of your customers, you're giving them time to actually build relationships with those customers. And those relationships are what um, are what's going to grease the wheel, so to speak, of continued um, purchases from those customers in the future and really strengthen that the the tie that a customer has to your store because it person they they feel like they're 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 special they feel like they like the the business is willing to take a personalized approach with them to really meet their needs at their level versus just have a cookie cutter approach to every single person that walks through the door <clears throat> and um i know speed is important for a lot of manufacturing and a lot of production purposes but when it comes to delivery is where I really would suggest that um, your team focuses on quality before speed because in the delivery of um, quality services means that they um, they really understand your business and they under and your business really understands the customers and when you have that happening that means that the cut the customers are going to come back again because they they feel an affinity and they feel a tie to your business in a way that they don't for your competitors. Does anybody have any questions about quality before speed? This was just a comment. Uh, there was a, there's a business that I, uh, one of my favorite places to shop uh, for clothes uh, over in Fargo. Uh, I wish they had a location closer, but they don't. And uh, there's a sales representative there that supreme customer service. And, you know, she's, she's the one that always made you feel when you came in that you were special and she took the time and, you know, you'd, you'd be in the fitting room trying on stuff and she'd come back and say, oh, Michelle, I think, you know, that just doesn't, that just doesn't uh, do you justice. You know, so she'd give you the, you know, the real opinion. If, if she didn't think something looked good, she would tell you that. So she was, she, you know, she wasn't just trying to make a sale because she very well could have just, and I think we've all, uh, women, we've all been in those situations where you come out of the fitting room and the, the uh, salesperson says, oh, that looks great on you. And you know good and well it doesn't. Um, so that's just, I think, an example. Um, I think when, when uh, they really care to help you find the thing that is best for you and it maybe takes a little more time on their part than making the quick sale, but they're really helping you to walk out with uh, a really satisfied experience. And since she's left that store, I don't buy very much there anymore. It's the same goods, but the service isn't the same. So uh, the service does mean so, so, so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michelle. That was a great ad. So I'll only talk briefly about loyalty programs because there's a number of ways that people can set them up. Um, all I will really say about them is that whatever program you decide to actually develop, 
um, design it so you reward your customers often and that you reward your customers consistently. Um, that they can rely on the point system or um, they can rely on the discount system in a way that um, encourages them to come back to the store frequently to engage and, and get more of that recognition that your loyalty program provides. There's also, an, the, there's loyalty, I mean, the most simple loyalty program is having like a points card. I've seen points cards given um, at cafes here in Crookston where every time you visit you get and you purchase a coffee, you get a, a hole punch in a card. And then if you fill up the card, then you get a free coffee. So there's very simple loyalty programs like that. And then there's more complex programs that are like fully integrated across websites, Facebook sites, storefront. But that's, uh, that, that can be a, a very involved process. But if you're willing to do it, there are consultants out there that'll work with you to, to make that happen. But I mean, the most important things for customers is that they, they engage with your brand often and that they engage with your brand consistently because return customers are the consist consistently the ones who spend more than new ones. And the more that you have your customers coming back, the more they understand your products, the more they understand your business and the more they want to be part of it. And they, there's a brand affinity that goes on um, psychologically that they, they feel that they're, that the brand is a part of them and they are part of the brand. Are there any questions about loyalty programs? Are there any general questions about customer retention? Don't you feel sometimes in these customer loyalty programs with the punch cards and stuff or to me, they're almost annoying because I never remember to bring it back the second or third time or, or when it's full, I forget to use it and my wallet just keeps packed with them instead of money. It's just customer, customer loyalty cards. <laughs> um, it depends on the, I mean, I, I would say that the customer, I, I don't get necessarily, I mean, it depends on how you use them, but I would say that, I mean, you could also do the, instead of having a customer loyalty card, you could do something online with your customers where I know like Squarespace, I think is what it was called. Um, they actually, you can become a king or a queen of a, of a space after so many visits. And um, there, there's a number of different ways that you can recognize them. But um, I think it really, People do, people that are really into loyalty programs will use the cards, Kermit. And I think that um, when they're not used, it's something that happens because they don't feel that brand, that, that, loyalty, pro that loyalty program isn't enough for them. They need something more. And it could I mean, be. You have, you have your large change, change like this. Uh, my wife is a Panera uh, customer loyalty, but you know, go to the till and you give them your phone number and you automatically get the credit or, you know, but mm -hmm. they have a card with you and, and maybe it's easier for uh, uh, women who have a purse or something, but, uh, you know, it, it's like coupons. I don't care for them either. <laughs> you got to remember to use them. Well, I mean, it, they do remember to use them if the brand appeals to them, if that makes sense. If the brand, if they feel attached to a brand, if they feel attached to a business, then they will use that loyalty card or they will use that loyalty program. If they don't feel that attachment, that means that there's something that they're not connecting with at your company. Either it's having to do with the service mapping, like, you know, something along your delivery, your delivery chain is not connecting with them or it's something having to do with customer service where they don't feel that there's consistent enough service or a, a customized enough service that they feel like a unique customer in your store. But if they feel that, then they feel motivated to use those um, loyalty coupons and use those um, loyalty programs to really um, 
benefit from that relationship. Does that answer your question, Kermit? Okay, thank you. I think what I'm, you know, what I'm hearing from you, Ronnie, is you can't just slap a loyalty program on as a, as a standalone strategy for customer retention. Uh, you, it, it's part of uh, a more, you know, that's one piece, uh, that's one tool in your toolkit, and it needs to be um, consistent across, uh, you know, with your customer service and some of these other points that, that you're making. It's not just a loyalty program that will solve or increase customer retention. Exactly. Are there any other questions about customer retention? We have a few minutes here. Well, uh, this is back to your, your comment about um, return cost or your point, return customers consistently spend more than new ones. I, you know, the old 80-20 rule, you know, we used to talk about that, that 20% of your customers are responsible for 80% of your business. So, you know, mm -hmm. sell more to your existing customers is probably a better strategy than getting new customers. The cost of getting new customers, not that, not that we don't want to get new customers, we do, uh, but it costs so much to get those new customers. Whereas, you know, we can probably affect our sales and increase our profits a lot by um, selling more to our existing customers through some of these uh, very things, these strategies that you've outlined, Ronnie. It's another great point, Michelle. Oh, if any of you ever have any questions about um, service mapping or customer service training or loyalty programs, um, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I may not have all the answers, but I will definitely look up something for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we really, really appreciate that, Ronnie. Any, um, any other questions or comments and, you know, um, this is a good time for us just as, as a business community to connect. So um, if you have a question or comment really about anything that's going on right now in the community relating to business, um, we can certainly open it up for that, but particularly uh, about customer retention. <clears throat> and if we don't have any uh, other comments or questions, we can um, call, it a, call it a wrap. There we go. I just want to thank Ronnie for joining us this morning and everyone else on the call. Um, I also just want to make a, a, a quick statement just kind of about what's going on in our world and, and in our state and across the country right now. Um, I, 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 I understand as uh, business owners um, how you may feel seeing what's going on in our world right now with small businesses and uh, uh, communities being destroyed and then also as a person of color um, understanding that there are um, we're, we're a long ways to where we need to be uh, so my heart goes out to you guys we're all feeling some kind of way we got stress we got anxieties you know we got the COVID-19 that's going on so with all these emotions um, I, I feel like in Thief River we are that's not who we are we are a strong community and, uh, you know, it's important to work together as a community to get through these things. So I just wanted to make that aware that I understand um, that we're all going through a difficult time and uh, we're still here for you. So, so thank you. Thanks for that, Antonio. I think all of us are looking forward to uh, better, better <laughs> coming day. in the future, better day. And um, I think uh, I am thankful that uh, we do have the community that we have. And, um, and I think the rest of the world could learn a lot from actually, uh, fr from us actually. Not that things are perfect here in Northwest Minnesota. Uh, I'm sure, you know, I know they're not perfect. Uh, there is no such thing as actually as a perfect world, but we can, we can have a vision and we can aspire and, and I think we can appreciate and be thankful for, for what we do have here. So thank you for that. And thank you everybody for hopping on today. Um, Laura, did you have any closing comments? Well, I, 
I would wanted to thank Ronnie. Um, that was just a fantastic presentation. And, um, you know, I've known and worked with Ron Ronnie for many years. And um, she's just a fantastic resource to all of us and located, you know, right in Crookston. So make sure to utilize her. Um, and also, I wanted to give a little bit of a preview for next week. Um, I just got confirmation for our speaker for next Wednesday's webinar, and it's going to be Bruce Newstead. And Bruce is the president of the Minnesota Retailers Association, and he's going to be talking about consumer behavior during COVID-19. Um, and so his just kind of a little preview of his presentation, COVID-19 has had a dramatic impact on not only Minnesota, cons or excuse me, on not only how Minnesota consumers shop, but what consumers are purchasing. In this seminar, we'll unpack the latest trends in consumer purchasing, as well as take a look at longer term changes and how businesses and retailers can adapt to those opportunities. So please join us next Wednesday June 10th, uh, right here again at 9 a.m. Fantastic. Thank you, Laura. And I too want to thank Ronnie for this great presentation. It was so good and uh, such great information. We really appreciate it. Um, thank you all and uh, have a great rest of the day and a great rest of the week. Thank you. Hey guys. Bye-bye.